Part 2 of Module 3 is Boris Johnson's Prorogation Judgment of 2019 reintroduces the rule of the law. So, the topics covered today is who is the boss, Her Majesty's Government or Parliament assembled, the courts, by applying common law precedents and the rules of equity, reaffirming common law rulings dating back centuries that actually the boss is the people, and for anything to be lawful it must be rational. So over to you Mark. Okay. Yeah, the Boris Johnson derogation <coughs> judgment, uh, when you uh, look at the commentary upon it, it's really about a political debate, because many people say it was a political judgment as opposed to a lawful judgment. So you get many differing opinions on it. However, when you go through it and analyse it, you'll actually see it's all about reintroducing the rule of law, which is what we need. Um, the determination is very simple and logical and it confirms the common law precedence. And uh, this was introduced in its current form by Lord Ellesmere uh, in the late 16th century, where he began to apply the same principle in all cases instead of following the inclination of the moment under the name of conscience. So this is the introduction of the rules of equity already in the 16th century. Uh, during the case, uh, they the judgment reaffirms common law precedents and uh, th these date back over the centuries. So that shows you the power of the common law and once you've got a good common law precedence, it actually stands the test of time. So the first one was that the uh, courts hold supremacy over those governing, and that goes back to the case of proclamations, which is from 1611. And uh, quoting from there, um, it affirms the limits of prerogative powers were set by law and were determined by the courts. The, the courts have exercised supervisory jurisdiction over the decisions of the executive for centuries. So this here affirms a number of things. And firstly, and most importantly, uh, is that law is created by the people in the settlement of disputes in the courts. And therefore, the monarch is delivering absolutely on her first promise. The people's respective laws and customs, we the people bring our dispute into the courts, that gets settled, that creates the law and affirms that law is not created by Parliament, which we'll be coming on looking at a later uh, module. It further goes on to uh, another case, Entwick versus Carrington, so this is from 1765, that Parliament is supreme over the government, so that it clarifies the structure uh, which we talked about in the Bill of Rights. So, uh, and uh, from that case, uh, from that judgment, it says, the Secretary of State could not order searches of private property without authority conferred by an Act of Parliament or the Common Law. So, there they use Act of Parliament or the Common Law. And we'll see uh, in a more recent case from 1982, um, where it clarifies this, where the actions of officers or departments of central government are accountable to Parliament for what they do as far as regards efficiency and policy, and of that Parliament is the only judge. They are responsible to a court of justice for the lawfulness of what they do, and of that the court is only the judge. So again, nicely clarifying the difference between legislation and law. Law is determined in the courts. Further, in the case of proclamations, it affirms that Acts of Parliament are subject to the law of the land, where it states, the king hath no prerogative but that which the law of the land allows him. Again, reinforcing the difference between legislation and law. So, that takes us all the way back to common law precedence, as was introduced by Lord Ellesmere in the late 16th century, uh, where the name of conscience has been used and hence the rules of equity have applied since then. Other arguments which weren't presented uh, in the case but uh, are extremely important ones 
uh, which again get down to the fundamentals of things which we've really been talking about previous plan. In the case of proclamations, at Proclamation B it says, but we do find divers precedents of proclamations which are utterly against law and reason and for that void. So what they're saying is there are pre-existing uh, settlements of dispute and judgments that anything that goes against uh, uh, law or reason, so logic and reason, is void. Um, and the f most famous uh, precedence that they're talking about is Dr. Bonham's case, which was from the previous year, which was from the Court of Common Pleas. <clears throat> so that was from 1610, where, uh, quote, it appears in our books that many cases the common law will control acts of parliament and sometimes I judge them to be utterly void. For when an act of parliament is against common right and reason, or repugnant, or impossible to be performed, the law will control it, and adjudge such an act to be void. And this here, we are familiar with the judgment that I've been using, which, uh, uh, sorry, before that, this is actually affirmed in legislation itself. The Privilege of Parliament Act 1512 says, summarized, paraphrasing, anything contrary to laws of right and reason and good conscience uh, is to be treated to be utterly void and of none, no, none effect is the wording, okay? And it goes on further that any party that's aggrieved by such unlawfulness is entitled to three times the damages and costs. And um, so uh, again, logic and reason, and this is so important with challenging claims. Uh, in the Boris Johnson judgment, it refers to the Council of uh, Civil Service Unions versus the Minister for the Civil Service, 1985. And this is the uh, law that I've been using, or the precedents that I've been using and you're all familiar with. If it's irrational, it's unlawful, and it defines irrationality as so outrageous in its defiance of logic or of accepted moral standards that no sensible person who had applied his mind to the question to be decided could have arrived at it. So I think everything that we've seen here it very nicely shows you what is the law. The law is created in the courts in the settlement of dispute between the people. Parliament creates the uh, Acts of Parliament, which is merely administrative law, and we'll be looking at this in more detail in this uh, module, it's administrative law merely to deliver the monarch's promise to rule the people according to their respective laws and customs. They have no jurisdiction beyond that. And I think the, the big take home here, Mark, is, is that um, when I very first met you, um, I've been talking to a number of other people that's mm -hmm. been invol involved in questioning uh, does the law still stand? Absolutely. And there's a number of arguments where you said quite uh, quite openly that the law and the system within the United Kingdom is actually very good, it's Absolutely. very efficient, it's very proficient. Mm -hmm. And to put that to the test, what you're saying is, is that the majority of cases that certainly of recent years is actually confirming yeah. that the law does stand in this country. Absolutely. And if you understand it, the only way the law can actively uh, be something that you can get confirmation of is to look at these these yeah. current arrangements. So yeah. the, the precedence there with uh, obviously the Boris Johnson case mm. actually just confirms Absolutely. that the law is there and the law is a very, very good, the, the English law is a very good system Absolutely. if it's Fantastic. followed correctly and you know how to, uh, know how to yeah. process things. It's quite. about accountability in the courts as well because, uh, and we discussed in uh, the questioning about legal representation, and so, depending on the quality of the legal representation, if they're not aware of this, which many are not, and you will not get equity, which is about fair and just. And, and hence the importance of actually learning your rights and standing on your rights and learning how to enforce equity. Uh, but like it shows, this is nothing new. The system, the more I've learnt about it, 
the more I've experienced it firsthand. I used to be also saying, oh, it's the corrupt judges, it's corrupt this, it's corrupt that. Uh, but it boils back to the same thing about holding the courts to account, just like we're trying to hold the police to account. It's about knowledge. And once you've got the knowledge, that creates standards. <coughs> you can rebut claims, which is what we'll be looking at shortly. So to close this meeting, basically be confident uh, in the law, just understand it, and then you'll know how to apply it. Yeah, absolutely.